Hello and welcome back to Aviary Attorney. I have no idea what's going on and neither do you, unless you do. Uh, maybe you've played this before, maybe you've watched it before, maybe you know more than I do. I know pretty much nothing because we wasted all of our times and now we need to go into the trial with basically no evidence whatsoever. But let's do it anyway. What could go wrong? You know what I think? We should just pretend and act really, really confident and no one will even know because Sparrison is gonna, it's gonna streak through the court. And then the judge is gonna go like, what, uh, where, where was I? And I'd be like, uh, you were just uh, about to declare, de de declare uh, s someone not guilty. And the judge would be like, oh yes, <laughs> quite right, quite right. And I'll win. No? Anyway. Once again, Falcon and Sparrowson find themselves waiting outside the doors of the Tribunal de Gre Grand Instance. Are you feeling nervous, Falcon? Oh yeah, this is the thing we did. Uh, what did I say last time? Did I do? What What did I do? No, I'm not nervous. It's fine. We did all this. Blah, blah, blah. And the dude show up. Yeah. Whoa! Senor Falcon. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. We've seen this. We did this. We did this. It's, it's, it's the thing time, right? Are we ready? Yes. Boom. Okay. Court time. Here we go. I need to, to prove that someone ate chocolate and didn't kill someone else, but the prince is not a prince. <laughs> this is as much information as I have. JJ! Severin Snape. Nervous? Why would I be nervous? I'm not nervous. I'm as calm as a cuckoo. You're the nervous one. This whole courtroom is nervous. I, I mean, I'm rubber or glue? Wah! Cool your feathers, Vakin. I forget his voice. Huff! Debrab? He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a cock after all, right? You can't even imagine a, you can't even maintain a stoic facade. I thought this trial would be the perfect opportunity for you to redeem your previous embarrassments, but if this is how you act before the trial is even started... Why, you pompous tailed... <laughs> Shut up, Falcon. Don't be that guy. Oh, Jesus, it's a new man. Romulus! What the... I get it. <laughs> Order, order, let's all settle down. Court is now in session. Pest. Pest. Falcon. What is it? Is it me, or does the primary judge look hairier today? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Maybe he's a wolf, a sheep in wolf's clothing. So it, it's nothing to f fear? That's what I'm gonna go with. He's a kind fella. As a different judge to the one who resided over the Dame Castle in his trial, you doof us. Looks like there's a space between you doof, you doof us. Oh, still, it's a little strange, isn't it? Uh, is it? See, all of my court, uh, court knowledge ever comes from playing Ace Attorney and watching Judge Judy. And in both of those cases, the judge is always the same dude, uh, slash uh, old kick-ass lady. So I'm gonna say it's a little weird. It's a little. It is a little, I suppose. <laughs> it is a little. Oh, Jesus. All these guys are the same though, right? Excuse me, Your Honor! I was under the impression that Judge Maxime, yeah, see? They think it's weird as well. Would be reciting over the case. Where is he? I ate him. Oh, that's a weird pan. When'd you go back to Falcon first? Judge Maxime's gone on temporary sick leave due to a terrible accident with a flight of stairs. But rest assured, assures, prosecutor, defense, and members of the jury that I am more than qualified to fill his shoes. Without further ado, let's get this show underway. Hem, I say. Unto you. Good sir, hum, and harumph. I do not trust you. You have a permanent smirk. It's like you're growling all the time. It's like micro expressions, but permanent. <laughs> is that, if it's not a micro expression, is it like a, what's a, what, what would be the opposite? A mega expression? <sighs> this is the trial of Prince Juan Cabrero. He's not a prince though. 
who stands accused of murdering Major Howell. Oh yeah, and he conspires to murder the king himself. Did he really? Roll call. <laughs> Roll call. The defense is present and ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Sweet. Good, very good. Yes, quite. I expect this to be a nice, speedy trial. I don't want any. I don't want to see this dragged out by technicalities and bureaucracy. I mean, that's what a trial is, though. Idiot. Well said, Your Honor. I expect that. Uh, I'm just gonna do it like a, like a like a chicken. I expect that, that once the court sees the overwhelming evidence, this this trial will be over in five minutes. Five minutes, dude. I can I can swing at that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's sweet. He's just messing with your head, Falcon. Keep it together. So we're all on the same page. Excellent, prosecutor. Please call your first witness to the stand. But well, I call the police officer who investigated the crime scene. I call upon Inspector Just Volerti. Shit, this guy again. Step up and recite the oath. Oh shit. Why do you look like? I get the feeling that because you can see nothing but the head, right? So I I keep getting the feeling that this is like two 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 like chickens stacked inside a coat, you know. To look older? Maybe. No. I forget his voice as well. I forget all voice. All vo every voice. I swear to speak without hatred and without fear. To tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Please recite your name and occupation for the court record. <laughs> My name is Inspector Just Volerti. I am a servant to the law. A uh, yeah, we know this. That'll do. Piggy. What? Pocorica really is going for a speed record, isn't he? <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, fine. Now, can you tell us what you witnessed on the morning of the 7th? Okay, sweet. This is this is what we need, right? Because we know shit all. What do we actually have? Uh, the book. Oh, yeah, Don Quixote. Um, I like... Oh, no, okay. Major Howell took it as a rose... Oh, the rose with the thorns and the pose, you know, po poison book oh yeah so so he has he had the book and the page 44 was missing and then we found page 44 at the murder mur, murder location that doesn't smell good doesn't it does it and then we have this one for the yeah oh yeah 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 the the what what the pi and the chocolate who we don't know nothing about sweet we do have some money though maybe we can just bribe bribe people <laughs> At 10 o'clock in the morning, I was called to the Louvre Grand Gallery by one of the king's royal guards. Did he just say, oh, cluck? <laughs> you'd like that, wouldn't you, Sparrison? That's something you'd say. You'd get along. There, I saw Prince Juan, King Louis Philippe, the corpse of Major Howell with a rose in his hand, and around two dozen citizens. The citizens and the king himself all attest to seeing Major Howell taking the rose in Prince Juan's hand and then promptly dropping dead. That would be a hella fast working venom though, or poison I suppose. Uh, maybe it's like, do, do we have like, no science? Oh, I guess not. I was gonna say, can we not like test the rose and see what the poison was, but... And what did the morgue uncover upon examination of the corpse? Oh. Oh, here we go. He died of poisoning. No shit. Aside from a prick up on the finger, there was no sign of external harm to Major Howell's body. Yes, yeah, see, that's that's because he's eating the poison chocolate. You need to look in the belly. Therefore, the poison rose must have been the cause of death. Must have. Must have. Maybe he was really allergic to pollen, and there was just a sunny day, and he just like, oh well, this is an inconvenient truth, but here I go. Bonk. Maybe. <laughs> Putting the pieces together, that does seem very implicative of the prince. I have no further questions. Fine. Ah, I was hoping that the coroner's report would determine that the guy died from a free card attack exam. Hmm. That would make for a particularly speedy trial, wouldn't it? But no, we aren't so lucky. Something else must be amiss in the old bird's testimony. The writer. I tell, I'll tear it apart. <laughs> I'll tear more things apart if you're not careful. Sparrison. Your Honor, I wish to cross-examine the witness. Falcon wasn't. Don't waste the court's time. He's like Scar. Resp 
respected, saluted, and seen for the wonder I am. A high-ranking police officer would never lie on the witness stand. I mean, I wouldn't accuse the inspector of lying, I just want to make sure that every base is properly covered. Maybe he's just forgotten shit. He does seem like kind of loopy at times, no? Ugh, this sounds like pointless nitpicking to me, but I'll allow it for now. Ah, shit, dude. We're fine, we're doing it. We're, do we're doing it. We're do Wait, stop squishing yourself. Select, okay. <sighs> Wait. What do we know about, no, about, where did the dude at? Where did the dead dude at? Who did the dead dude? Fontaine, uh, Port Rufus, no. John Romulus, no, where did the dead dude? There he is. Do we know like when he died? Royal Guards, the legend of Rose, uh, It doesn't state like a time of death. All right, well anyway. Let's talk about... <laughs> Good mythic of morning. Let's talk about that. The corpse of the howl and dozen citizens poison. I guess we can just talk about anything, or will he... Will he punish me? Uh, will he just, like, up and... Up and spank my bootay if I waste his time? Alright, let's talk about Major Howl for a bit. Inspector! I would like to ask you about the victim, Major Howl. I would like to... Oh. I would like to ask about the contents of his belly. Wait! Hang on ein minute, bitte. Major Howell was a dog. He's a dog. If he ate the chocolate, wouldn't he just, you know, sort of keel over anyway? Or is that not how we're rolling in this world? Who was he? What if he's, what if he was the intent, what if he was the intended victim? What if he was the intended victim? I mean, he died, isn't that... Or we assume... Oh, I see, because we're assuming that the king was supposedly the victim, but he died in... Okay, I see. Yeah, it's like a Ron Dumbledore uh, uh, Slughorn uh, Mead situation, right? Bam. We have been treating this case as if the intended murder target was King Louis-Philippe. But there is another possibility. What if the killer was trying to murder Major Hal from the very beginning? JJ, stop talking. <laughs> you just said something very stupid. I could explain why and humiliate you in front of the whole court. Alternatively, you could retract your question right now, and I will save your humiliation for another day. You're bluffing. <laughs> I know a bluff when I see one's evident. My question stands. Okay, bad cause. The myriad of reasons why your questioning was unfathomably stupid. Best, it doesn't absolve your client of any guilt. The defendant was... I don't... Listen. I'm just trying to straighten out the story, first of all. Nobody has motive to kill Major Howe. How do you know that? I, I get it. The is 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 your liberty of the kings have not major. He's in the present. Fourth, prosecutor dial. Shut up. They're stalling. What a buffoon. <laughs> oh, I lost a little favor. Oh, fine. Apparently now, in court, you're not allowed to ask questions. Do you have another question about the victim? Nah, fine. Uh, I want to ask about the citizens. Do I? I want to ask about the poisoning, first of all, if we're on the clock here. Poison, yes. Correct. He stated the signs and symptoms were textbook. There is no possibility that his death was natural. What kind of poison? How was poisoned? Eh. If we can detect poison in a body, we should be able to detect poison on the rose. Yeah? Do we know this for sure? Do we know for a fact that the rose was, was poisoned? The, the, the thorn of the rose was supposedly coated in poison. We don't know for sure. What kind of poison was it? Did the coroner mention specifically what kind of poison it was? He was not certain. At first, the coroner posited that it was a plant-born poison, like the one of the aconite flower. But when he le learned how fast the poison had taken effect, he noted that this was atypical of aconite. Consequently, he suggested that it might have been some newly engineered concoction. Newly engineered, you say? <gasps> well... But that only reaffirms that it was a very deliberate, uh, deliberate assassination attempt. Indeed. 
Do you have another question about the position? Yes, I want to ask about the other thing. How? How exactly what was Major Howell poisoned? What was the delivery mechanism? His finger was pricked by a poison rose. He even commented out loud about it seconds before dying. All 22 citizens. 22 citizens. 22 citizens? Uh, who witnessed the murder attested to seeing and hearing this. But is there any possibility that he was poisoned by something else? Shut up. What an abs absurd thing to ask, JJ. We just heard the 22 people saw the victim prick his finger and die. What are you suggesting? That he pricked the finger at, that the pricked finger had no relation to the poisoning. That's exactly what I'm saying. Ba ba ba. I don't doubt that Major Howell was poisoned, but I do doubt that the rose was the cause. Unbelievably. <laughs> but Bob, only a total buffoon could fail to draw the blank 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 here. Shut up, let me talk. This is a cross-examination, not an interruptus negotiatus major Lee. Get out of here. I don't care. You should leave it to shut up. Actually, I can't tell him that. Ha <laughs> ha! Got him. Busted. Shut up. See? That's what you get. You ca Carico. I tried to ask. But why drop? We didn't check the rose for traces of poison. It just seemed obvious that the rose caused the poisoning given the timing of the incident. Well, but now would be a good time to make a test. Here's a marvelous thought. We pricked the finger of the defendant with the rose. Now he's threatening murder. Listen. Judge? Uh, a, 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 a side, sidebar? No? If the rose is in the person's eyes, that's okay. okay. Shut up. Why are you in on this? A marvelous... Yeah, let's poison the quote-unquote prince, potentially, and see if he survives it. This is like a witch-burning thing now, isn't it? Or like a witch... Like, we'll, yeah, let's throw her in, and if she floats, she's a witch, and we'll kill her, but if she sinks and dies, then she wasn't a witch, so it's fine. Shut up. A witch trial! <laughs> this is in America. Oh, shit, burn. That's not how we do things here. Calm your feathers, JJ. It's clearly a joke. There are more, far more human way, uh, humane. Do we still do like humane things? Shouldn't it be like there are far more an anim animane ways of testing for boys? I'm sure the inspector will perform his duty with due diligence. But actually, we won't be able to test the road. Shit. Why is that? Given the dangerous nature of the flower, it was destroyed by the police force. We burned it to ashes? These police suck. Tesk. Proud shop professionalism. If we have no way to know whether the rose was poisoned, then this whole trial ought to be called into question. I've tried, but through the process of uh, reasoning by elimination, we can still deduce with absolute certainty that the rose was- We cannot do that though, not with absolute. We can hypothesize it, we can assume it, but you know what they say about assume? It makes you look like an idiot. See? See, look at it. Uh, hold up a mirror, see? And he's all shocked like, You're right! I do! Anyway. In other words, uh, there was nothing else at the crime scene that could have caused poisoning. But we do know about one thing. Wrong. There was something else at the crime scene that could have contained poison. Something the investigative police blindly overlooked. A book? <laughs> no. Chocolate. Bing. Look at this. What am I supposed to be looking at? It is the paper wrapper of a piece of chocolate. It was found in the Louvre, the Salle du Tibre, to be precise. And we can date its consumption to the day of the incident. Yo, oh, I'm not suggesting. That Major Howell ate a piece of poison chocolate moments before he died? I most certainly am. Do oh. oh, ah. <laughs> hey, I got my little favor back. So are we just like even now?
Did you see this wrap up? Up a crime scene for yourself, Inspector. The police force do not have time nor resources to trawl every piece of trash at every crime scene, I'm afraid. <laughs> Isn't that what the police are supposed to do? In other words, you marvel at it. Tusk, astounding unprofessionalism. The prosecution is right to be disgusted. What a disgraceful display, Inspector. <laughs> I offer my apologies, Your Honor. I don't want your apologies. I want you to do your damn job properly. Get off the witness podium before I kick you off myself. As you wish. I'll take my leave. Until next time, yes. Aw, he's so nice. He just, he means well, you know? He's just a little bump, bit of a bumbling buffoon. And like an actual, like, <gasps> dude. Do you think there's a baboon buffoon? That would be fun. So, let me get this straight. This chocolate wrapper was found at the crime scene. Correct. But you have reason to believe that it was consumed on the day of the incident. Duh. I do. I have an expert food tasting witness who is willing to testify if need be. <laughs> it's you, you idiot. You have a foodie witness? I don't recall anyone like that. Who on earth are you talking about, Fal? Oh, I see. Hmm. But do you know for certain that Major Howe consumed this chocolate? Well, that is a fact that we are still investigating. Nah, <laughs> shit. Can we not just like poke his belly a bit? Just, did they not? Can we do an uh, 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 what what's it called? Uh, abduction? No. Uh, wait, where is he? Where? No. Wait, who is this? Undane. Oh yeah, the hunting beagle. What? Royal God who was killed in the Louvre Grand Gallery. Little Rosa. Okay, we only know that about him ever. The flamboyant, flamboyant prince of Spain. Uh, we should put that in quotes now, though. On trial for the mur yeah, we know this already as well. I don't see the relation at all to the um, the bureau, the like the PI people. Nathan, <laughs> uh, an arrogant ass, Nathan. Cause get it? Cause he na Nathan. <sighs> Funny. Anyway, Bob. Do we have evidence that it was poisoned? Oh shit, Bob. <clears throat> Again, uh, that is something that may require a little more time to definitively prove. So then, in actuality, you don't have evidence that Major Howell consumed some poison chocolate. Instead, you have a solitary piece of rubbish that you plucked straight out of the gutter. But that is weak, even for you, JJ. I mean, kind of, so do you. You don't have any proof at all that that the rose was poisoned. <clears throat> you have proof that he pricked his finger on it. But, you know, handling roses, that's not wholly uncommon, uh, an uncommon thing to do, is it? Let's move things along. I have another witness I would like to summon. Big is a man who claims to have an excellent view of the people going in and going out of Louvre in time of incident. I call upon Monsieur Toussaint Kingley. Oh shit. Could the witness please approach the stand and recite the oath? Oh, oh. Wait, is this the new guy that we were that we were missing? Hey, what? What can I I can't flick through my thing anymore. Oh wait, I can, but it's not there's no arrow. Oh there it is. Yeah, it was. That's the missing one. Missing man. Ah! A fisherman in denial. Denial about what? Hello, hello, hello. Hello? Oh, right, the oath. Uh, I swear to speak without hatred, without fear, to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Please state a full name and I can pay for the court record. My name is Toussaint Kingley and I'm a person who fishes. <laughs> a person who fishes? I saw you're a fisherman. Oh, oh, is that how it is? I thought the French justice system was better than this. 
Why is he in denial about being a fisherman if he's a man who fishes? <laughs> I beg your pardon? Here comes Chisan Kingly, the kingfisher. Clearly, he must be a fisherman. Because, didn't you hear, all kingfishers are fishermen. I... Well, you are carrying a fishing rod. And, and, can a man not carry a fishing rod, real bait, without being branded a fisherman? <laughs> look, look, the prosecutor is carrying a riding crop. Clearly, he must be a horse jockey. Is he? Is that what that is? Really? Why are you? Okay. Bob, for pity's sake, fine, fine. We can list your occupation as person who fishes, and not fisherman. Thank you. Actually, why uh, why do you carry a riding crop, Severin? I've never seen you ride a horse. But I don't know, JJ. Why do you, a 30 something year old with no health problems, carry a cane? Wait, do they still ride horses in this world? Isn't that kind of weird considering that there are like elephant people and donkey people? I would assume that there are also horse people in that case. Hmm. I <laughs> like this picture. <laughs> Be sure to get my good angle, alright? This is veering quite far off the course. Could the prosecution please get back to his questions? Well, of course, Your Honor. Mons, mm, Kingly. Is it true that you were nearby the Louvre at the time of the incident? Uh, oh shit, yeah. Oh yeah, the route that Roy took. I forgot. Yes. I was sitting upon the railing of the pond, the arts. Whoa. Oh, okay. Pond, the arts? That's the new bridge is just a stone's throw from the loop's south entrance, correct? That's right. Oh, jeez. The music's so intense. And what were you doing at the time of the incident? I was fishing. <laughs> of course. A man who fishes. Shocker. Piffed. Kingfishers, am I right? Falcon. What is it? What? What? What is a kingfisher? <gasps> Was he fishing for the prince? Uh, for the king of Spain? What is his name? King P P something or other? Oh, he's done it. He's the murderer. He was baiting. He was baiting the king. Come die. Shit. I solved it. So, would you have plenty of opportunity to see the people who entered and exited the palace? You, can you tell us what you saw? Well, the Louvre's a busy place. Naturally, I saw a lot of people. But at 9 a.m., I saw the king, Louis Philippe himself. Yeah, because you were fishing for kings, weren't you? Huh. Enter the building. He was surrounded by his entourage, of course. Then, around 9.30 a.m., I saw his shifty-looking fox lurking around the entrance. Uh-oh. Your Honor, I object to the witness's use of the term shifty looking. It's a vague and biased description. No, really. He looked super shifty. <laughs> that doesn't matter. I saw him rubbing his paws and cackling gleeful. Okay, well, I mean, now you're. That's getting slightly more. We're shifting more to the. Oh, geez. Shifty. <clears throat> oh. And then I saw him take out a rose and carefully rub the stem. <laughs> Was rubbing the stem in public? Rub the stem of a rose, you say? As if he were applying something to the flower, perhaps? <laughs> well, Monsieur, I really shouldn't speculate. Of course! But it was wrong of me to ask such a leading question. Hmm. But yes, <laughs> it definitely looked like he was putting some sort of powder on the stem. What? Even I wasn't expecting such a bold admission. Members of the court, it sounds like what we have here is a direct witness is a direct witnessing of the defendants readying the murder weapon. But Vance claimed that the rose was never poisoned, and yet here we have a man who saw the poison with his own eyes. Bop! I smell perjury. <laughs> Sorry, that's just me. I had some chocolate, and it doesn't, it's not sitting well. You do? No, question. 
He saw a shifty-looking criminal readying the poison and cackling near the scene of the crime. That's not believable at all, is it? I think you might be right. I wonder if I have any evidence that calls Toussaint's story into doubt. What? Your Honor, I would like to cross-examine the witness. Really? This nonsense again? You just heard the witness directly describe your client readying poison on a rose. What is there to question? Well, I'm just trying to uncover the truth, Your Honor. But, oh Jesus. Ugh. Fine. Do your thing. Go on, Falcon. Go make a fool out of yourself. I'll do it. I'll make myself a damn good fool. Wait, what's my actual evidence of this happening, though? I know that the dude was other places. Oh! Wait. I really wish I had a map of the place. Like, the map they keep showing of, of the locations. That's just money again. Uh... Because he had the book, and the page was found in the garden at the west entrance. Which is on the way other side. I'm imagining the map here now. So the bridge was down here, right? On the southeast? Assuming that the map is north-oriented. He would have been all the way over at the west entrance. Because this... Yes? Bah! Uh, let's do it. Pont Bart Powder picked up a shifty-looking fox. Wait. Saw the king in his entourage into the building. And around was his shifty-looking fox looking around the entrance. I guess that? Pont... But... Tony Rose Gabriel... I guess we questioned the shifty look... King Fox... Or maybe the location in general? Let's... I guess let's... let's try the location? Is it about the right the incident? Yeah, okay. Is it good for... What entrance... Oh! What entrances can you see? Monsieur Kingley, you had a good view of the Louvre South entrance, didn't you? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, look, look, look. So he was over... way over here. The prince, or not prince. He was way over here, and then he was coming this way, right? Probably? To, to end up in the same spot as the other people? And the dude was sitting here, so there's no way he could have seen him. What about the other entrances? The other entrances? You mean like if you're entering from Tuli Gardens or place the carousel? No, I couldn't possibly see those from the bridge. Oh. But of course, that's irrelevant. Um, no, it isn't. <laughs> Excuse me. Listen, shut up. Manja King, they witness Prince Tuan entering the south entrance with flower in hand, and that's what counts. What if? Prince Juan used another entrance, though. <laughs> yes, what if he approached the Louvre from? Tulle Gardens. Tulle Tul Tul Gardens. Yes, above or below. <laughs> he parachuted. No. That's a big what if. But do you have any evidence that Prince Juan entered the Louvre? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, yes, I do. I have definitive proof that the prince approached from the west, not the south. Hey, I know what I saw, Monsieur. I'm doubtful too. Shut up. Look at this. Bam. Bing. Look at this. Uh, book page? Page 44 of Don Quixote, specifically. It was found just as that Louvre's west ends. This proves nothing! <laughs> I'm not done yet. Take a look at this. Bing. Don Quixote. This is the book Prince Juan had been reading in jail since his arrest. I believe he has had it on his person for some time. And yes, page 44 is missing. That's the first thing I checked. You do realize what this means, don't you, Severus? The defendant was in was present in Tulir Gardens prior to entering the Louvre. This also means, in all likelihood, what? the defendant's entered the loop from the west entrance, not south. He could not possibly have been seen by Monsieur Kingley from the Pontiacs. What? 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 I know what I saw, Monsieur. 
a fine theory, Falcon. But, but maybe the defendant took the long way around. One can still travel from Tulir God to the Louvre's entrance south of the Walking River. An extra two kilometers? That's two kilometers? Jesus. I mean, that's not too far. It is kind of far. That's far. That's like a half hour walk. walk. An extra two kilometers of walking just to enjoy the pre-murder scenery? Let's not say silly things, Rico. Okay, baby, the defendant deliberately left the page there to mislead the invest- uh, Shut up. Now you're the one blindly speculating. Yeah, there you go, Falcon. You show it. Yeah, it's not blind speculation. It's a viable hypothesis. You are a fond of, fond of logic, aren't you, Kakariko? Let's talk about Occam's Razor. When gone between the two seemingly equal hypotheses, we must side with the one that imposes the fewest assumptions. Which of these theories makes the fewest assumptions? One. The page from Prince Juan's book fell out the way, fell out on his way to the Louvre's south entrance. Two. Prince Juan deliberately planted the page on the off chance that it would be discovered, then he took the long way around. You meant to say west entrance though, right? Because he said on his way to the south entrance, which is wrong. That's not where he went. He went to the... He went to the west entrance. Anyway. How dare you? The nerve of you to lecture me on such basic philosophical concepts? I'll stop lecturing you when you stop making such basic mistakes. <laughs> Monsieur Falcon, please calm yourself. What is the point of all this yammering? The ultimate point is that Tussaud's, Tussaud's memory testimony is fabricated, made up, out of fiction. No, everything I've said is the truth. I suspect that the witness isn't even a fisherman. <laughs> I'm not a fisherman. We, we see, he admits it himself. Oh, innocent, perhaps. What a twist. I gained a little favor. Dude. For entering uh, a trial with basically no evidence and no leads for nothing, I feel like I'm doing okay. No? Anyway. Prosecutor, you have something that will put this arrogant falcon in his place, don't you? I must concede. You... Concede? On that point, at least, Falcon's evidence strongly suggests that the key component of Monsieur's kingly testimony is false. Ah, uh, no. This doesn't mean that Prince Juan is innocent, of course. All Falcon has demonstrated is that this particular witness is unreliable. But, but I did see something, I really did. Alright, so... Maybe I didn't exactly see a shifty-looking fox, I made that part of the story up, but I did see a swan lurking around the south entrance on the morning of the murder! Oh shit. Dude. It's... Catherine Marie Sign. A swan who works as a flower seller in Les Halles Market. Soft-spoken. What is she hiding? <gasps> Poison. Do shut up, witness. Your word is mud at this point. How can we possibly trust anything you have to say? Don't, don't. Ah, <laughs> uh, your honor, Judge Romulus, we're out of time. Oh shit, we're ten minutes overdue. To start on the hair versus tortoise trial. Oh no. Is that late already? Curses. I was hoping we could have the case wrapped up in a single trial session. Perhaps a shame, but ultimately an accurate sentencing is always preferable to a speedy sentencing. Yeah, alright. I don't need to hear your moralizing. Court will resume this Friday on 21st, 9 o'clock, don't be lame, man. Dad, do your damn job, get a stupid fox commission already. You're supposed to be unbiased though, Judge Mr. Man, sir. Um. But I will do my best to ensure that justice is served, your honor. Boom. So, 21st. A lot came up on this trial, huh? Yeah, no doubt about that. But something's bothering me. Why would the fisherman guy, Manzia Kingley, lie on the witness stand? 
<gasps> Maybe he was coerced. Mm, I see. He's taken a barnacle and covered it in bioluminescent algae as a diversion, as a coercion. Mm. Maybe it's possible that he was coerced or bribed. That's just what I was thinking. Maybe the real murderer threatened the fisherman into making up a story about Prince Juan. Let's keep an open mind. Anything's possible at this stage. But to be perfectly honest, something else is bothering me about the trial. The judge, dude. Judge Romulus. He's acting without a shred of plastic professionalism. Sorry, I am very drunk. He obviously more he's obviously more interested in securing a guilty verdict than he's in discovering the truth. But why? Maybe he has a vendetta against the Spanish royalty. But I'm not so sure. There must be something else at work here. But the oh Oh shit, it's Jim Carrey from the hit movie Batman Forever. Excuse me, um, 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 excuse me, Monsieur Falcon. Oh shit, oh no, it's this guy. Uh oh. It's a letter with like cut out like letters on it. From an from like a murderer. This is like a ransom. Did someone kidnap someone? Did I have a like a chicken I didn't know about? It's uh, uh, sorry to bother you, but uh, uh, this uh, letter just arrived. I I think it's for you. Uh, my letter for me. I wonder why it wasn't sent to my office. Have you been demoted to courier status, Rupert? Oh, but, uh, hush, hush, Sparrison. I, I don't need to be uh, pitied by first-year dropout. Oh, poor guy. Well, oh, good comeback. So, what does the letter say, Falcon? Oh, no, it is. It... It's a threat. A threat made with cut-out newspaper letters? Oh, wow! I didn't know those things actually existed. Let me see. <laughs> Falcon? It's like Gladys. Stop your investigation, or the hair will be consequences. Are you... Is this the mom? Is this Chloe's mom from Life is Strange? Consequences. There will be consequences. Anyway. Scary. There's no question that this letter originated from Major Hal's murderer. He or she must be aware that we're getting close on covering the truth. That's about right. But why would a person write with cut out newspaper letters like this? Masking one's handwriting would be the most common reason. Although I can't help but wonder why they would bother since we don't have any handwriting samples to compare it to. Hmm. Or do we? Maybe this is all handwriting and they just write like a typewriter? <sighs> mm. Mm. Or maybe it's just a piece of evidence I don't have. We're still going ahead with our investigation though, right? Nope. <laughs> yes. Oh yes, absolutely. If a lawyer were deterred every time they received a threatening letter, they would never get any work done. Mm, besides... With only three days before the next trial session, we can't afford to be worrying about petty things like this. Tuesday. Wednesday. Thursday. Wow! You're right! <laughs> Good job. Pap, pap. Let's make those days count. Bam. A new day. So, okay. So we do get- oh, shit. So we do get, like, another chance of going places and looking for evidence. Uh, that felt- feels better. Because- there was a lot of locations, and I felt a bit cheated that this, even though I've been there before, still has a, 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 a clock. It still takes a day to go there, when no other place have had that happen. And this place, despite being new, didn't take a day. So I just thought that the game was glitching, but apparently it was correct, and I was tricked. I felt cheated. Uh, <laughs> although I wasn't. The game was doing everything properly. I was just assuming that it wasn't. Anyway. I think that went fairly well. No? Considering what I was going in with. So, I'm gonna leave this episode here. I hope you're enjoying this so far. Uh, but, I will have to leave this for now. And until next time, do take care. Goodbye! <laughs>